Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how I've made this animation. I haven't been posting any videos for a while because I was mainly working on the game environment for Noara, so this took me a lot of time. Those last days I was able to work on this uh, character animation, so I will show you how I have made the diving animation, which is the destruction animation. Character is fleeing through the water while the building is collapsing. As usual, I will start with the blocking stage. So, I will create a new animation, clean up the old one and start posing my character. I also make sure that the camera fit the camera position in game so that I can check that my animation is readable. I'm also fixing some rotation influences so that the head follow the rotation of the body. It will be easier for this animation. So I'm using the auto recording option so that Blender will automatically write a new keyframe for any transformation I'm making. And in the keying option, uh, I have set the filter to available, so it's the first time I'm using 2.8 and now you have to go into this menu to activate the keyframe filter so that Blender won't write unnecessary keyframes. So in the first stage of blocking, I will set different poses. We will start with the heddle position then the anticipation where the character is gathering energy then the current jump the transitioning in the air and finally the diving position so watch out how i try to get very obvious gesture and curvature inside the body with strong directional lines so I'm writing the different poses. I'm using uh, the same offset each time of five frame because in the very beginning, I don't care about timing. I'm just writing the few poses we've seen just before as clean as possible. And I make sure that I'm writing a keyframe for each bone of the character so that I won't have a strange interpolation. I figured that for uh, non-cycles animation, I now prefer to break down the main poses as much as possible during the blocking stage, meaning that I will write the extreme poses like those, and then I will add some intermediate poses, still in constant mode without splining. It's way easier than to control the splanning stage, the timing stage too. I think it's a bit faster, but there is a more guess what work to be done on the poses. While when your character is moving uh, with a, a spline interpolation, it's sometimes easier to feel the movement, but you will have more work refining it if the blocking was wrong. So I think it's a matter of uh, experience, but now I prefer to get a little more detail into the blocking stage. Since there isn't uh, any real acting in this animation, I'm uh, focusing only on the main features of the body, such as the arm, hips, torso, etc. Uh, I'm not moving the fins or secondary shapes because I will be animating them during the, the splining stage directly. All uh, secondary animation, I'm used to do them uh, during the spline because if you get a nice result with your main body adding those secondary animations uh, that will bring more details and more life is just an enhancement you need to make the uh, rough animation to work well the main shape of the body to work well before adding detail
Now that the main poses are done, I'm making the intermediate poses. So generally what I do is that I take the hands, feet and main torso and use the common shift E to automatically create intermediate poses and then I refine them by hand. This allow me to keep the curvature into the movement. So I'm trying to uh, guess uh, the curve of the jump inside the air you can there are tools to, to to see it but during the blocking stage it's pretty hard because you will have like a straight lines so when you are looking for arcs and curve it's uh, pretty uh, complicated so just do it uh, visually use the grid in the background and try to get this curve then you will be able during the splining stage to refine this on stone I'm working with the timing, so this is where I'm moving uh, the big chunks of keyframe still in blocking to get uh, the animation how I would like it. So I'm currently moving from uh, constant to uh, spline mode or Bezier mode so that I can see the interpolation and then I'm just dealing with some of the main uh, features such as the end and adding a few keyframes here and there to break down the movement and change the timing starting to offset the position of the body the position of the hand the position of the feet before i go into splining like this so one of the main thing i've been doing uh, lately on my characters and on this new uh, rig i've done a few months ago is to be able to stretch the different parts of the body uh, as you can see the feet are very stretched and this is something i've seen in some making of or breakdowns of league of legend animation on twitter is that they go really really extreme with uh, their poses uh, totally stretching or squashing the character since our game is seen from the hair, it's a top-down view and it's pretty far. Um, I figured that our old animation looks good, but they are a bit too shy and we need something very extreme so that it's very readable and it has uh, some good character and some good contrast inside the game. During this splining stage where you are playing with the different curves of the position, the scale and the rotation of the different bones, this is where I tend to uh, correct and fix the curvature of the movement, meaning that if you project a curve in time of the movement of your uh, character, for example for the hips or the feet, you want this to I make um, a regular arc something really smooth and this will make your animation uh, better this is something i used to uh, do like if my curves look good my animation will look good but since i've been watching a lot of making of i've seen that most of senior animators or big animators in big studio they just revise the pose frame by frame that's some uh, crazy stuff but uh, this is how you get good result i'm not saying that the result i have is like uh, triple a quality but i try to use the same method as them so spline curve give you a logical visualization of what you are doing for a bounce for example if you see your curve is slowing down before the impact, there is a mistake. But then nothing is better than the visual uh, quality of your movement. So you should look at your character and check out that the curves are have a logical shape. I've made possible to hide the arms of this character because he has very long arms and it's sometimes very hard to read the torso correctly when you have those in front of you. Uh, so this allow me to uh, work on the torso position first. This is something I always do. I always start with the main torso controller, then the feet because I like 
to see the feet when they will leave the ground and the curvature they will made and also to stretch the leg it's very important to control the feet because I'm using IK most of the time here and stretch the head and stuff like this once I have nice curves of the body I can use uh, the movement of the arm maybe we can we could consider it as a secondary animation in a way it's very important but compared to the torso if you have to give a hierarchy to your animation it's a secondary movement and then another uh, thirdary movement let's say will be the fin and the small details and then uh, in the fourth place will come the facial expression because I like to move the eyes, open the mouth and I make stuff like this. I like to stretch his eyes or make them move as a jelly. So as you can see here, during uh, this animation stage, I've decided to, um, instead of having the arm diving in front of the head and hiding most of the character, I've decided to put them alongside uh, the bodies so that the arms are layered uh, against the hips and it makes the silhouette of the character way more readable and uh, way more like athletical even if he's pretty stupid he's a water guy so he's supposed to be uh, swimming and jumping and diving like a regular champ let's say So there are a few minutes left to this video where I will let it go into uh, a time lapse with some nice music from the game. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you liked this video and to subscribe if you want to see uh, more content like this. And I will see you very very soon.